Hello, Year Two, and welcome back. We are on Lesson Five of the Shang Dynasty. Really excited for today's lesson. If you haven't been watching these lessons so far, don't worry. You can go back to Week One or Week Two on the website, and you can watch the first four lessons. If you've been watching regularly, welcome back. So happy to see you again. You know the drill by now. Make sure that you've got a, a pen or a pencil and make sure you've got um, an old notebook or a piece of paper is fine as well. So you've got something to write on for when I ask you to pause and do your tasks. Speaking of children doing some work, oh my goodness, I have been blown away by how hard you've been working because lots of your parents and carers have been sending work over over Twitter with the hashtag and I've been able to read it and I've been reading so much of your work and I love it I love how hard you're working I want to give one shout out to begin with um so the first shout out that I'd like to give here is for this piece of work. And what I love about this is that this is um, from Eve. And what I love is that Eve, if you look closely, has actually sketched out the artifacts that we were looking at a few lessons ago. And I didn't ask to do that. So Eve's obviously thinking, if I want to really remember this, then I need to make sure that I've got those sketches in there. So well done for taking some initiative and leading your own learning there, Eve. Really, really impressed. You get a gold star. Today's lesson, we are going to be learning all about foo how. I am really excited about today's lesson because we're learning about two extraordinary women. We're learning about Fu Hao, who lived in the Shang Dynasty thousands of years ago. And we're also learning about somebody called Zheng Zheng Chang, who is still alive now. And they're two extraordinary women who um, have amazing achievements, each of them. We're going to learn all about all, each of them. So I'm very, very excited for today's lesson. So today's lesson is Who Was Fu Hao? That's our title. This is what the lesson structure is going to look like. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to learn about Zheng Zhenchang, who I was just talking about. Then we're going to find out about how Zheng Zhenchang opened the tomb of Fu Hao so that we could discover all about this amazing warrior princess. We're going to learn about Fu Hao's life, about how she was a warrior, a general, a priestess, just the most interesting life. And we're also going to learn, we're going to have our end of lesson quiz, of course, to see if you can remember all of those key facts and have them locked into your brain. That's our lesson structure for today. Let's get started with Zhen Zhen Chang. Before we do, though, a little bit of a, a little bit of a recap of something that's really important. Um, who can remember what does an archaeologist do? Who can remember what an archaeologist does? We looked at archaeologists in lesson one and it's been lesson two. See if you can say now a really good definition of exactly what an archaeologist does. What's an, what's an archaeologist? OK, see if what you said is close to this definition. An archaeologist finds and studies artefacts to discover how people used to live in the past did you is, is that what you said if you did well done very impressive we're going to learn about an archaeologist who is from china so we're going to go now and have a look at we're going to have a quick look at our map so here's a map of the world um not including the americas and some some other parts but here's a, a picture of some africa and, and asia and europe and we of course we can see that little red dot you can see um china and that's where the ancient shang um, lived on the Yellow River. Let's zoom in a little bit. And we're going to zoom in to a place called Anyang in, um, in China. So it's still there now, Anyang. Um, but Anyang was important because for a lot of the Shang Dynasty, it was the capital of the Shang Dynasty. That's where they built their palaces. And what we're going to look at today is an archaeological site in um, Anyang because there was an archaeologist called Zheng Zhenchang. Here she is. Uh, studying a book, looking all scholarly because she's an incredibly intelligent woman. And Zheng Zheng Chang is known as the first lady of Chinese archaeology. That's what she's known as. She's just the best archaeologist in China. And she's learned and she's an absolute expert on the Shang dynasty. So she was actually the first female archaeologist in China. 
She was born in 1929 and she went to university in 1959. And as I'm sure that you've already studied and know about um, in history, women weren't always encouraged to go to university and sometimes they were stopped from going to university. We know now that that, of course, is very, very silly. But back then they thought, oh, no, women shouldn't be able to learn all of these interesting things. And so women were held back. But Zhen Zhen Chang had other ideas. She said, I'm going to university to find out all about archaeology. And she was tremendously successful because Zhen Zhen Chang was the person who discovered the tomb of this very important priestess and warrior and princess called Fu Hao. And she discovered that quite recently in 1976. So only about, what's that, about 45 years ago, only about 44 four years ago that's when she discovered it so it's still quite new considering it had been buried for thousands of years it was only recently discovered and Zheng Zhen Chang is now a leading expert in the whole world on the Shang dynasty and I love the Shang dynasty so I'm so happy that we're finding out about Zheng Zhen Chang so I'm going to tell you the story now about how Zheng Zhen Chang discovered this amazing too, because it's a really interesting story. So Zheng Zheng Chang heard about this old abandoned house, and she had an inkling from what she knew already about the Shang Dynasty that this could be an important site. And so she took a team with her, and she went to investigate. And you can see here, here's um, Zheng Zheng Chang leading a team of other archaeologists, and she started to dig out the site. And they do that using um, something called a probe. Say that word, probe 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 and a probe is it's, it's kind of like a metal stick that you stick down into the ground and it can help you to see what's underground or feel what's underground without having to do a big digging excavation and so Zheng Zheng Chang said let's put a probe down to see if there's anything down here and that probe went down five meters five meters well I'm not even two meters. So to get to five meters, you would have to put like three grown ups on top of each other. It'd be something like that. Three grown ups on top of each other. That's how far down the probe went because Zheng Zheng Chang said, I think that buried deep, deep, deep after thousands of years, there might be something five meters down. But nothing came back. Nothing came back from the probe. And a lot of the people said, Mm, I don't think that there's anything down here. We should give up. But Zheng Zheng Chang said, no, I'm sure that there's something down here. And so she carried on digging three more meters. And that's when they found some, some red paint and a hard surface. And they knew that under, and Zheng Zheng Chang knew then that there was a tomb under there, very deep deep underground there is a tomb a tomb is a room where somebody is buried and she said this is going to be from the shang dynasty and now we need to dig it all up so it's lucky that she persevered and carried on and once you find a tomb here's, there's some new vocabulary because i know that you love to learn your new historical vocabulary once you find a tomb then it's important to um very carefully dig around or dig all of the mud out and all the dirt out so you're just left with the objects and the things that are there and when we dig away all of the different things and find the objects then that's called excavating a, a site okay so excavate say that word excavate your turn excavate excellent saying it over and over again will help you to remember excavate finding out what's in that tomb and I'll show you a picture now. Here is a real picture of when they were excavating the tomb of Fu Hao. And she found lots of objects. And of course, because she's a good archaeologist, she took them back to university. You can see that her here studying these artifacts. She used porcelain, which is kind of like what your plates are made out of at, at home. She used that to uh, recreate anything that was broken so that she could study in depth exactly what it was like for the Shang dynasty. That's the story of Fu Hao, how she went to university, studied archaeology, had an idea about going to a site where she thought there might be a burial site, probed down, was told by everybody, no, there's nothing down here, but said, no, we have to carry on digging. We can't give up and discovered this incredible tomb of Fu Hao. Who we're going to learn about in a moment.
So it's your turn. It's your turn now. Can you remember that whole story of Fu Hao and draw a picture map? So what I'd like you to do is think about that story of Fu Hao. If you want to rewind and listen to that again, then you can. Draw a picture map showing how Zheng Zhen Chang discovered the tomb of Fu Hao. So the first bit, you might like to uh, draw a picture of Zheng Zheng Chang with all of her books at university, learning all of the important knowledge about the Shang Dynasty, and draw a picture for each stage of her discovering the two. Pause the video and do that now. Amazing. So once they were in the tomb, um, this is what they discovered. Are you ready for a picture of what it was like in the tomb? This is the picture of the tomb. It was almost perfectly intact. OK, there was al almost everything was untouched. So sometimes when people find ancient tombs, great like grave robbers have been in there. They might have broken stuff. Things have been damaged over time. They might have stolen stuff. But Fu's Hao tomb was completely intact. It was untouched. And so they had all of these amazing objects. What objects? I hear you ask. What objects do they find in there? I'll show you. The objects that they found, get ready, because there are a lot of objects in Fu Hao's tomb, which tells us just how important she was, because there were so many objects. In her tomb, there were, get ready, there were 755 jade objects, 564 bone objects, like hairpins and arrowheads carved out of bone, there were 468 bronze objects, including kind of vessels, which are like cups or pots made out of bronze. And there were 130 weapons in those pots. There were 23 bells. There were 27 knives. There were four mirrors and there were four tiger statues. That's not all. There are 63 stone objects, objects made out of stone. There were 11 pottery objects, different kinds of pots and vases. There were five ivory objects. Ivory is a kind of material. So it's um, it's uh, like from an elephant's tusk. We don't use it anymore because you have to kill elephants or rhinoceroses to get it, which is very cruel. But back then they would use it. And there were 6,900 cowrie shells or about 6,900 cowrie shells and remember a cowrie shell they're those little seashells and it's what the shang used as money so that's kind of like today being buried with like um a million pounds in banknotes and just like a million pounds being put in a tomb that's that that's what they found in her tomb so this is really useful evidence for historians right they found all of this evidence in the tomb what I'd like you to do is look at those different objects and draw what you think they might have looked like. I'm going to show you in a minute what they really look like. But before I show you, choose any of those objects. And based on your knowledge of the Shang Dynasty so far, can you draw what you think they would have looked like? Pause the screen and draw some artifacts from Fu Hao's tomb now. Great. I'd love to see some of those pictures. Don't forget at the end, there's the hashtags that you can use to send it in so that I can see them. Let's have a look at what the, the artifacts really are, because we've got art. We, we can see these artifacts. So let's have a look at what artifacts they really found. There were these mysterious little sort of figurines, figures. Uh, we don't know who this is. Must have been somebody important to, to Fu Hao, though, the person that was buried there. There was this kind of I think it's made out of jade as well. It's kind of like a dragon pendants fascinating isn't it have a look closely at that i'm going to make the screen bigger so you can see closely there was this kind of vessel or pot that was actually used for wine so it was used for pour, pouring wine probably during religious ceremonies there were all of those cowrie shells that they used as money thousands and thousands and thousands almost seven thousand of them there was there was this we you might remember this what's this can you remember what this was from a, from a few lessons ago? That's an axe. It's, it's that. So you put a, a wooden stick onto that and turn it into an axe. And lastly, there were this. Uh, there was this bronze sort of like pot. Um, maybe it was a cauldron. Maybe it was a sort of chest to carry thing to keep things in. Okay, so I'm going to number these now. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, 
six. You can see six artifacts there. And what I would like you to do is I would like you to pause the video and think what would these different artifacts tell us about Fu Hao? This is the job that Zheng Zhengchang had. She had these artifacts and she thought, OK, I found the tomb of somebody. They're buried. These are the objects. What can I infer? What can I work out about this person based on the objects I can see? So pause the video and answer that question now. Awesome. I hope that you've used the numbers there to say, number one, these figurines could tell us that Fu Hao um, was advised by this very important person. And so she wanted a figurine to remind her. Very interested to hear about your different historical analysis of those different sources. So we, we have since pieced together and worked out exactly who this tomb belonged to, because remember those oracle bones. There was somebody in the oracle bones that was mentioned lots and lots of times. And that person was called Fu Hao. And Fu Hao was a kind of, well, we're going to find out all about her. But perhaps most, uh, her two most important roles is that she was a, a great warrior and she was a great priestess. She led religious ceremonies. She lived during the time of this emperor in the Shang dynasty. And his name is Wu Ding. And Wu Ding was emperor of the Shang dynasty, and he went to different tribes. And because he didn't want any of those different tribes to um, rebel against him or to attack him. And so one of his tactics for that is he would get one of the girls, one of the women from each tribe, and he would marry them. And so Wu Ding had over 60 wives from the different tribes. And, and that was a tactic that he would use to try and make sure that nobody rebelled against him because he would say, well, look, my wife lives there. And one of the one of his wives was this person here as a statue. And this is Fu Hao. She was just a normal sort of peasant girl and uh, wasn't sort of from the nobility, would have been in the working class that we looked at before. But she was married to Wu Ding and she very quickly rose to be one of the most important people in the Shang dynasty. You can see a statue of her there. And that's where her tomb is now in Anyang in China. So what do we know about Fu Hao? Well, one of the things we know is that she was a priestess. She led different religious ceremonies and she would do the pyromancy that we looked at earlier with the oracle bones where um, people put hot sticks into the oracle bones and ask questions of the ancestors. She wasn't just a priestess, though. she was a great general. A general is a military leader, somebody that leads an army. And Fu Hao led lots of armies into battles and fought in those battles. There were actually a few. Um, so you might be thinking, mm, that's, that's just thousands of years ago. Um, were women allowed to be in the army then? And the answer is, in ancient China, we do have some evidence that um, there were female generals and female warriors um, who, would go and, who would go and fight in wars and, and, and lead armies. And, and Fu Hao was the most successful example that we that we have because she was a great warrior and she never lost a battle in fact there was one tribe who the shang dynasty had been fighting with for years and years and years they were called the two fang tribe and they were defeated in a big battle by fu hao and her army so she was very very successful as a priestess, as a general, and as a warrior. And she was even um, uh, successful as a politician. So somebody that led the country. So when other, when people, leaders from other countries or other states would go to the Shang dynasty, um, Wu Ding didn't always meet them to discuss the different matters. Fu Hao would sometimes meet them. So she was an incredible woman with all of these different talents and all of these different jobs. So to put together all of our knowledge about Fu Hao, this amazing woman from the Shang dynasty, I've got some sentences here, but I've been a little bit naughty and I've scrambled up all of the sentences. Okay, I've, I've, I've scrambled up all the different chunks. And your job is to look at the sentence and see if you can unscramble it to make a sentence that makes sense. So, for example, our first sentence 
here, if we look at that top line, it says, was discovered in 1976, the tomb of Fu Hao. So two different parts to the sentence there, but they're jumbled up they're in the wrong order. So I would write that out, that new sentence, I would need to write that out as um, the tomb of Fu Hao was discovered in 1976. So I'm using the same words, was discovered in 1976, the tomb of Fu Hao, but I put it in the correct order. And you can see I've used my capital letters and full stops in the correct places. The tomb of Fu Hao was discovered in 1976. See if you can have a go at the other five sentences. Read the different parts carefully. Jump, unjumble them so that they write a sentence that makes sense. Pause the video and do that now. Great. OK, let's see how successful you were. If you've got a different colour pen, then you can get a different colour pen to mark your work to see if you were correct. And if you got it wrong, don't worry, because now is a chance to edit it. So let's look at some of those answers. So the second one was um, the second sentence. Uh, the correct answer was Fu Hao was a very successful military general. Tick or fix. The next one. The next sentence was Wu Ding married over 60 women from different tribes. Our next sentence, almost 7,000 cowrie shells were found in Fu Hao's tomb. Our next sentence, Fu Hao was a priestess as well as a military leader and a politician and all sorts of other interesting things. And lastly, everything in Fu Hao's tomb was found untouched. That's what we know about Fu Hao. That's what we found out thanks to Zheng Zhenchang, the first lady of Chinese archaeology, that amazing expert on the Shang dynasty. We now know about this other amazing woman, Fu Hao, this warrior prince priestess who never lost a battle, was a politician um, and uh I'm really, really grateful to Zheng Zheng Chang for finding out all of that stuff so that I can learn more about the Shang Dynasty, and this amazing person from the past. So that's it for today's lesson. We've learned all about Fu Hao, how she, how, who she was, how she, she was discovered. I'd love to see some of your work. I love to read it. It makes my day. So if you've got your parent or carer um, when they're not too busy, then if you ask them to take a photo of your work and post it on Twitter, and use those hashtags, learn with Oak, O-N-A year two, and the, the handle is at Oak National. So if they use that, if they put that in their in their tweet with the photo, then I will see it because I search for that every night and I'll be able to see it and see your work and I'll write back to you. In our next lesson, we're going to be learning all about how the Shang Dynasty ended. And it's sad because it's our final lesson learning about the Shang Dynasty. We've learned loads so far we learned about how the Shang Dynasty began, some of the important events during the Shang Dynasty. And so we're going to finish with how the Shang Dynasty came to an end in about 1066 BC. Look forward to seeing you then. Please share your work with me so that I can see it. Well done for working so hard. Bye.